Okay, we are now recording. So I want to thank everybody for coming um, tonight and for your interest in learning about the FLTC maps and map tools. Um, I'm Christy Post. I'm the Director of Communications, Marketing and Communications for the Finger Lakes Trail Conference. Um, most of you, I think, heard about this workshop through social media, and I'm the author of most of our social media posts in the, our FLT footnotes, our monthly e-newsletter. Um, so I, I'm always, I always share with people at these presentations to please share your stories and pictures with me because that, I like to share those on social media and in our newsletter. Um, if you're out there hiking the trail, I know you've got stories to tell and pictures to share. So send them my way and you can send them to fltnews at fingerlakestrail.org. Um, so these presentations started because we usually do a couple of big get togethers in the spring and in the fall. And those are opportunities to provide some training and some networking. And with COVID-19, all of those things were canceled this year. So we decided to take to, take to a virtual space for those things. Um, so we've offered three online presentations now and they've been really well attended and really well received. Um, so this is the third and we will be offering them monthly, sometimes maybe more than once a month. Um, and tonight we're gonna to talk about maps and map tools with Scott Geiger and Roger Hopkins. So Roger Hopkins knows all there is to know about our interactive maps. Like he knows more than anybody knows about our interactive maps. So he is truly the expert for that. Um, Scott is also a map expert and he has hiked the Finger Lakes Trail end to end very recently. Um, and he actually did it in a very interesting way, which maybe he'll talk about. So. Um, both of these guys, and both Scott and Roger are behind the scenes, are webmasters. So they are the, the men behind the website. Um, so the, just a few words about the Finger Lakes Trail Conference. We are a nonprofit organization. The trail was built and is maintained entirely by volunteers. Um, and we are able to do what we do because of, we are funded largely by membership dues and donations. So if you are not an FLTC member, I encourage you to please uh, visit our website and check out our membership page. Um, it's $40 a year and that $40 goes a long way towards supporting everything that goes on with the Finger Lakes Trail, including these kinds of presentations that we're able to offer at no charge to you. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Roger and Scott and they have got, they're going to be sharing their screens and doing everything. We ask you to please um, stay muted for the course of the presentation. It's going to be about an hour. We will have time for questions afterwards. We're going to have a hard stop at 8.30. I do anticipate a lot of questions. Um, if you have questions during the course of the presentation, you can put them in the chat box and I'll be checking that periodically and making sure that we uh, refer back to that. And any questions we don't get to, we will try to answer afterwards. Um, and this presentation is being recorded and will be shared on our YouTube channel. I'll get it up there tomorrow. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over and thank you, uh, Roger and Scott. Thanks, Christy. Well, I'm going to uh, fumble with sharing my screen for a moment. And my presentation will be entirely by screen sharing because uh, otherwise you can't see me and I can't see you unless we have Zoom. So we're going to talk uh, briefly about using the Fair Lakes Trail maps. And I assume that your interest here is that many of you are hikers or you're thinking of being hikers. And I, our maps are an important tool you need to be aware of uh, to make sure that your hikes are safe and enjoyable. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to talk about the interactive maps that you can view on your computer. They're available anywhere in the world that you have internet and a browser uh, at no charge. And I'm going to uh, show you how to use the maps and some of the hidden tools that, that are really not hidden, but unless you look for them. Uh, we'll then talk briefly about our paper and digital download maps that you can purchase. Uh, the interactive map is free, but our, our, uh, if you get your own copies of the maps, uh, we ask you to pay for them. And that's an important source of uh, revenue for uh, building and maintaining the trail. And then Scott will take over and uh, t uh, tell you a little bit about using uh, our maps on a 
uh, on a smartphone using one of the uh, the apps that uh, that uh, uh, Scott likes a lot and that we've we know a little bit about. There are many others that we uh, have not gone through the process of preparing a, a tutorial on them, but I think you'll find the one on, on Scott's favorite app uh, to be pretty complete. And then we'll deal with your questions. So let me close this and go to the website. And I hope you all know this uh, URL, fingerlakestrail.org. And I'm going to go to the Go Hiking menu and the Finger Lakes Trail interactive maps. That will bring me to this page. And you'll see that we've split our maps up into four segments. And we've done that uh, simply because uh, if, if your interest is local to one of these uh, regions, uh, the map will download more quickly than if you download the entire map. So we have the Allegheny region, we have the Western Finger Lakes, Eastern Finger Lakes, and the Catskills. So I'll pick one of these regions and uh, bring it up on the website. Let me move all of you out of my way. I'm not sure how to do that. Hide, yes, okay, sorry. Um, this is what our map looks like for the, the uh, uh, Eastern Finger Lakes. Um, and I'm going to ask you the first time you do go to here, or if you go the next time you've, if you've already been here and has, have not done this, to click this link up here and uh, review this short explanation for what you'll find on the map. We will be covering some of this tonight, but this will be the first thing you want to do when you get on the map yourself is to have a quick look at the uh, help file. I only brought up one of the segments, but I can use these uh, black arrows to go to the adjacent segment. So now I'm in the Catskills, and now I'm back in the East, Eastern Finger Lakes. We can zoom in by using this, uh, this control here. We can zoom back out. And you can also zoom using your mouse uh, wheel um, or by double clicking, you can zoom in. Um, so, so you'll do that the normal way. When you're scrolling, you need to be aware that using the scroll bar, you're scrolling the whole web page. So if you want to scroll the map, simply Grab the map, hold your mouse button down, and you can move it around to see the area that you're particularly interested in. If you don't need to, if, uh, to be on the website while you're doing this, you can, uh, by using the menu, uh, go directly to one of the, uh, the maps, the full system map, each of the four regions, or you can find just the North Country Trail on the, uh, the part of the North Country Trail that's on the New York, on the Finger Lakes Trail. If you're gonna be spending a little bit of time on the map, one of the things I like to do is open in a full window. And that's uh, this button here. And that means I will be leaving the website, so I'm no longer on the website, but I do have the full map on my screen and I can scroll around freely. So that was the uh, uh, open and full window. When we zoom into an area of interest, we'll begin to see some of the detail that's on the map. So as I scr scroll in, you'll see that uh, uh, symbols appear, uh, map outlines appear, and the tracks of the trail appear. And I'm going to go through each of those uh, briefly. So the map outlines are these gray rectangles and they show you the uh, coverage of each of our 66 different maps. So we have 66 maps covering the entire system. 
And this shows you the coverage of the one that has the name of I-1. It's called I-1 because it's the interlocan trail in the National Forest. This map is called M-15. Our main trail that goes from uh, Allegheny uh, State Park to the Catskills, um, we call that the main trail, and that's uh, shown in 34 different maps numbered M1 through M34. So uh, a handy thing to know when you're dealing with our maps is, is this uh, nomenclature. The uh, uh, conservation trail, which will, is, is uh, called CT1 through CT12. Um, the, the Letchworth Trail, the Crystal Hills Trail, the uh, uh, Bristol Hills Trail, they, they're all named similarly. <clears throat> so that's the map outline. The tracks, I'm going to zoom in. The tracks are um, look like this. If you hover on them, they, they get uh, uh, emboldened. Um, the, the color of the blazes on the trees and the signposts you see is also the color that you see on the track. So the, the Bob Cameron Loop has orange blazes. The main Finger Lakes Trail has white blazes. And so the colors will show you the, uh, the color of the blazes that you'll look for if you're out hiking. When you uh, hover on a, a trail, you'll also see a brief, you'll see the name of it, uh, and you'll also see the length of it in miles. When you click on one of the main trail maps, you'll see the, the extent of the main trail within that one map. So on map M16, the main trail is, uh, 20.57 miles long. This segment of the main trail uh, traverses uh, M15. It's 21.74 miles. And each of the little segments, the loops and the little spurs, uh, th they also will show the same thing. The, um, the Bob Cameron Loop is 2.38 miles. So we have map outlines and we have tracks and then we have symbols. <laughs> and we have a lot of symbols because there's a lot going on on the map. The most common symbol you'll find is uh, a, a parking symbol. Um, if you um, hover over a, a symbol, it will give you a uh, the name of that symbol, hopefully a, a, a name that's uh, somewhat descriptive, although not all of them are. And then if you click on the symbol, it will give you more detail about that thing. So this is a, <coughs> a parking symbol uh, and it's described with, as wide shoulder parking, but do not block the entrance to the field. So this is important information uh, for you. This also shows the latitude and longitude of that parking place in two different formats. So you could paste, copy and paste that into your phone or another app of some sort. The parking symbols also have this feature on it, uh, uh, driving directions. So if I put in an address, the one that's easiest for me is my home address and click go, it will bring up Google Maps showing how to get from my house to that trailhead. And the fact that it's 28 miles and will take, or 15 miles and will take 28 minutes. We can't show our entire map on Google Earth, but we've opened this in a different window. So I can easily just return back uh, to the, to the uh, interactive map. We have a few uh, uh, no parking symbols, and I would like, and we're going to have more, because uh, as you 
hopefully know, and if you don't, then you, you should know that much of the Finger Lakes Trail is on private land uh, with the permission of the landowners. Um, approximately a third of the trail that's off the roads is on private land. And private landowners have some commitments from us as to how the, the trail will be used. Uh, if they've, they've requested that people don't park in their, the front of their house or in their driveway, <laughs> we will put up a no parking symbol and uh, ask that you honor those as well as any other requests that uh, we publicize about uh, uh, the wishes of the, of the landowners. Um, we, we have had a few situations this year with the pandemic of uh, new hikers not aware of our obligations to our private landowners and our dependence on them. And we have had a, at least one case of a landowner who just had had, had enough and said, uh, the trail on my property is now closed permanently. <clears throat> so please don't be uh, the one who causes that to happen because it's a, a huge um, effort on our part to try to keep the trail open across the state. And parking is, a, is an important part of your responsibility as you hike. Uh, we've got uh, symbols for camp spots. Um, here's the uh, locust lean-to. This is on property owned by the Finger Lakes Trail in uh, Enfield, New York. Uh, so there's the name of it, the Locust Lean To, and here are the amenities there. It's got just about everything except water and a kitchen sink, but not listed here, and I guess we should have it listed is the fact there's a uh, cell phone charging station there, solar powered, uh, resulting from a Eagle Scout project. So uh, it's a great place to s spend a few hours or a night. So that's uh, camping. We have symbols for water. We use two different symbols. If it's potable water, uh, for example, in a state park or even in a few of the private homes across the, the trail, um, we'll show it as potable water. If it's just a water source, uh, we call it uh, water needing treatment, but we certainly would uh, encourage anyone uh, having water other than from a, a very trusted source of drinking water to treat their water. And then we have these red flags, and these are as important as the <laughs> No parking symbols, but these are these are trail closures. Most of them are hunting closures. So the land is on private land. The landowner is a hunter or allows hunter to, hunters to use his land. And so he wishes that the trail will be closed to all hikers during hunting season. So if you click on the red flag, you'll see the dates when it's closed. And you'll see that the that segment of the trail is outlined in red. <clears throat> so those are really important things to be aware of as you're going out on a hike, uh, particularly during the hunting seasons that can be in May and in October through De December. If you're hiking other times of the year and you're planning your hike, you could reduce this clutter uh, by hiding the closures. But you you should uh, have them on at least as you're doing your broad planning uh, so that you know where the trail is closed during hunting season. Occasionally there are temporary closures. Uh, this one I think is uh, about ready to be taken down uh, as uh, cold weather comes, but there was a, a hornet's nest here that got a bunch of different hikers in different parties. So we put this warning up uh, this is a case of a trail being closed temporarily. Uh, the landowner is, uh, has asked this to happen. Uh, they, they may reopen it eventually, um, but for the time being, it's closed. So 
we have not updated the the uh, maps that we sell in, in this uh, specific case. Um, we'll, we'll wait until that, that is uh, resolved as to whether it'll be a, per, a permanent change <clears throat> or whether uh, there will be some kind of a reroute uh, around it. So look for those symbols on the map also. There will be trail no uh, notices for that and I'll get into trail notices in a moment. But this is an example of the trail notice that, that explains that, that closure. So while most closures are hunting, they could be things like logging. Uh, we have one place that has a special reenactment of the Civil War uh, once every two years and we close the trail there. So look for those. I want to go back to this one symbol that's on each of the maps. Uh, if you click on that, it will take you to more information about that map. Um, so it will take you to trail condition notices that look like this. And I'll spend just a moment on that later. Or it will take you to more information about this map. So this will show you, again, the coverage of the map. It will show you a picture of the paper version of our maps, front and back. It'll show you where it is in New York State, and it will show you an elevation profile. Um, and I'm remind, I have to remind people when they look at an elevation profile that uh, you have to look at both the vertical and the horizontal scale. Uh, none of the hills are this steep, although I think there is one of them somewhere that's darn near that steep. But this doesn't show you the steepness, it just shows you the uh, change in elevation. And I did pick a map that is one of the two maps on our trail that ha have uh, lots of vertical change. <laughs> Uh, on the map detail page, we also list the public lands that host the trail, and there are links to their websites here. Uh, we show the place names that are on the map, where you might look for services if you're a long distance hiker, and then keys to the uh, adjacent maps. And you can also buy this map if you want, either paper or digital, and I'll explain that in a moment. But let's say I want a paper map, I can simply add that to my cart, my card is up here, and it now has that map in it. I'm a member, so I get the discounted price. Uh, this is the non-member price. So let me come back. So that's what this little button will get you to, is that, that information. Okay, two more little details. This is a little menu up here called a hamburger menu by some that would allow you to change the background of the map. So now I've got the satellite view and this is, um, this is great to be able to zoom in and actually see where the trail is relative to farm fields, hedgerows, buildings, and so on and so forth. So you can use that view if you want, and you can zoom way in. You can also pick a different uh, background. Um, some people like uh, to see contour lines if they're gonna be hiking where there, there are hills. So this is one of the, <coughs> Uh, the government uh, survey maps. And I'll go back to our default, which is this. You can change the uh, op opacity of the background if it's not clear. And, and you can also show your current position. So I'm currently here. <laughs> I'm not in the field, but if I were out in the field, it would show me where I am relative to the trail. 
And this blue button will, will do the same thing. I talked about the symbols and the fact that they can be controlled with this visibility menu. So by simply turning these things off, I can hide symbols or show just the ones I'm interested in, for example, camping. There's another one here that's initially hidden just to reduce clutter, but that turns on the tick marks and the tick marks show five mile, I'm sorry, half mile, 0.5 mile intervals along the trail. So this is a handy way to kind of plan your, your hike and know exactly how far uh, you'll be going and uh, match that up with your, uh, your intentions and your uh, aspirations. <laughs> so that's the tick marks. Down in the corner here, is a place where I can find any address. So for example, if I want to find Michigan Hollow Road, it will find it for me. And it is right I'm sorry, I'm looking for my little there it is. It was right there. If I look for the intersection of Michigan Hollow Road and Smiley Hill, it will zoom right into that place. And that happens to be the, where, at least in the Ithaca region, one of our most popular hikes is the Abbott Loop. So that's near the trailhead of the Abbott Loop. You could also put in a latitude longitude, or you could put in a place name of some sort. And uh, it actually is going through the Google um, uh, search, so it should find anything that you could find on a Google map. This little uh, crosshairs uh, shows the center of your map at the moment, and down in the corner, uh, it's, it shows you the latitude and longitude of that, of that place. <laughs> um, so if you needed to tell somebody where you were, you could, uh, well, actually the, the show my place would, would sh show you that. But the, the real use for this is if, if someone tells you a place and you want to see where it is on the map. So for example, if someone reported a tree was down at the beginning of the Abbott Loop and the, they could move the map around till the plus mark is where they want it and then they could come down here and copy that latitude and longitude and paste it into an email and send that email to trail reports at fingerlakestrail.org and that would really help the people who are going to go out there with chainsaws to know where that tree is down. There is a measure tool here, but it will measure only straight line distances. So that line is 558 feet, and now it's uh, two uh, 0.23 miles. So you've got that tool also for estimating distances. So let me talk briefly on purchasing maps. And I'll do that by going back to the website and shop the store and go to paper maps, maps and GPS data. We sell paper maps that are printed on waterproof paper with archival ink, so they will last. And uh, on the back of those paper maps is a step-by-step -step narrative of what to do on that map. So at mile three, for example, there is a spring, but you must treat the water. Uh, at mile 4.7 is a nice view to the northwest and so on and so forth. 
So the paper maps, you can buy one or two at a time, or you can buy sets of them. Um, the sets are the best way if you want a, a bunch of maps to plan an extensive trip. So you can buy all of the maps, or you can buy uh, these various subsets of the, of the maps. If you only want a few maps, then the best place to go is uh, uh, to this menu, shop, whoops, shop, individual paper and digital maps. And that will take you to this page where you can now select either digital or paper. And it will show you a simplified version of the interactive map, but it's listing just the maps that uh, just the information and the, the uh, uh, names of the maps. So no symbols or anything, just the tracks and the outlines. And if I click on one of these map, these uh, icons, I get an add to cart button and I can add that map directly to my shopping cart. And so now my shopping cart has two maps in it. And you'll see this green uh, outline just reminding you that you have just placed that map. This is the one I placed in the in the cart earlier. Now, if you get digital downloads, you will on. Uh, I'm sorry. If you get a paper map, it will arrive uh, U.S. mail, hopefully, um, a first class mail. Uh, if you buy the digital download maps. As you, after you check out and pay, you will get a display of uh, links that will let you download those maps right then. Uh, you will also get an email that has those same links in it. And so you can download from that email. Um, the links will expire in a week. Uh, we do that to clear up space on the server. Um, so don't, don't wait to download your maps, uh, download them to your computer or your other device and, um, make a backup copy, uh, the way you would if you were purchasing any kind of app or software. The download file will contain two files. It'll be a zip file. So you'll bring it to your computer and unzip it to create a PDF file. The PDF file you can put into Acrobat Reader, which is free, and uh, and then you can print it on, on paper. Um, or you can, uh, uh, as Scott will show you, you can download it into your smartphone and use it with one of the apps that's available there. The, the zip file will also contain a GPX file. GPX stands for Global Positioning Exchange and our geopositions exchange and it's a file that you can download onto a gps device or you can also download it into your smartphone so you'll have those uh the moment you want them um 24 7 as long as you have a browser and internet so that's all i have to say about purchasing maps uh, i will point out that the maps all of our maps are created by volunteers and maintained by volunteers. Uh, that the revenues from map sales goes directly into the operating funds of the Finger Lakes Trail Conference. And it, it helps us to run the office. It helps us to uh, purchase the software we need to operate our website. And it also uh, goes into uh, supplies and equipment uh, that are used in trail maintenance and building. So that is uh, all I have to say, and I would like to turn it over to Scott. I will stop my share. All right. <clears throat> all right. Thanks, Roger. So what I'm going to go over is after Roger talked about uh, once you purchase the map, uh, you get this zip file, and what do you do with the digital map at that point? What what uh, what can you do with that? Um, so 
I'm going to show real quick. This is what Roger was talking about. This is the extracted zip file and you have a PDF file and a GPX file. We can open up the PDF file in a, in a uh, PDF reader and it shows us our map here. We also have the back side of the map, which has mile markers and information about various points along the map. Uh, and there was a recent question on one of the uh, Facebook pages asking uh, whether a person should purchase the L2, Letchworth 2, or the M7 map. Uh, and the, the, I answered that question actually in anticipation we were going to have this, uh, th this um, presentation, but although they both cover about <coughs> the same area, they actually have different information. That backside, that second page information is different. So on the M7 map, all of this information would be for the main trail. On the L2 map, it would be for the Letchworth branch. So depending on which trail you wanted to hike, you would get the right map. Now both maps, the map itself does show the same, about the same. All right, so let me start up my phone here so we can share it. And there we go, good. All right. So what I have here is I have transferred the PDFs for M18 and M19 to my phone. Uh, now, the app that I'm using, it's called Avenza Maps, and it operates with PDFs. The PDFs of our, our, of our trail are what are called geolocated, meaning they have uh, GPS coordinates embedded in them. And this Avenza Maps app can detect those and help position you on the map. So I've downloaded M18 and M19 already to my phone. And I'm gonna go ahead and start up my Avenza Maps. And this is the interface that you'll come up to. Now, I already have two maps in here. I have map 142 and 143 of the Catskills. Those are not Finger Lakes Trails maps. Those actually come from the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference. Um, I didn't want to clear them out because I actually purchased these maps. So I'm leaving them in there. But I'm going to show you how you add a Finger Lakes Trail map into Avenza Maps. Now, I'm using Avenza, uh, the free version of Avenza Maps, and that allows you to upload up to three free maps into it. And that's usually enough uh, as you're going along. Now you can store more on your phone, but you can only have three in here at one time. I'll show you how you delete it later. Um, but to add it is the orange plus button in the lower right. And when I click on that, I can download or import a map. And then it gives me a whole list of things and I'm gonna go from storage location. And my storage location will default to my downloads folder, which is where I have my M18 and M19. And I'm going to start with an M19 for right now. So I clicked on it. And what it does is it starts processing the map. And it takes just a few seconds to process it. And there we go. And now it's tiling. And now it's done. And each map will show you how far away you are. So right now I'm sitting 23.7 miles away from map 19, uh, a little further from the Catskills map. And so I could go tap on the map and go into it. Now, since I'm not on the map right now, it's not really gonna be real helpful. So what I did is I went out on Labor Day and I did a recording. And so I'm gonna play that recording for you now, showing you navigating on the map and how to use Avenza. So I'm gonna switch over to that and we'll go ahead and give that a play here. Okay, so I'm out here on Black Road on map M19 and I've opened up Avenza maps so that I can use the uh, FLT map to navigate. Now what you're seeing here is the home screen and I've got two of the FLT maps, M18 and M19, which I've imported. And I also have uh, Catskill maps, 142 and 143. And those two maps are purchased maps. They come from the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference. I am using the Avenza maps free version and 
with the free version, you can import or upload up to three maps. Right now, I have two, M18 and M19. The paid ones, 142 and 143, don't count towards that limit. Now, you can see here, uh, M19 says I'm on the map. M18 says I'm 5.4 miles away from it. And then, of course, the 142, 143, I'm quite a bit further because that, of course, is in the Catskills. So what I'm going to do is open up M19. And it opens up the PDF, the, what comes in the zip file that you download along with the GPX. And it's expanded out and I can move around and I can pinch and pull to zoom in and I can turn it and, and uh, take a look at all sorts of different things. Um, we can see the key up here at the top, so the parking, trail register, uh, water, potable, uh, reliable running stream or spring, and so on and so forth. Down in the bottom, there's sort of a target, uh, a bullseye target. And if I click on that, what that will do is center me on my location. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And we can see right there, the blue dot is where I'm at. And I'm going to pull to uh, zoom in so I can see where I'm at. And I can see nearby, uh, we've got the P, which is parking. We've got R, which is register. There is also a, uh, a, a binoculars icon, which means a view. And we can see some other trails. We see an orange trail. We see a blue trail. We also see an RS for reliable stream um, on both sides of the parking area. And we also see a shelter or a lean-to. Uh, and that happens to be the Foxfire lean-to-to. Uh, and you can also see on the blue dot, there is an arrow, and that is the direction I am facing currently. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself moving here, and we'll go ahead and see how this navigation works. Okay, so I'm starting down the trail, and you can see uh, the arrow pointing the direction I'm heading. And so, so I'll go ahead and walk for a little bit here, uh, and I'm going to pause the recording and then come back to it in just a little bit. Okay, so I've been hiking a little while here and I've made it to the orange loop, the Davies Diversion. Uh, and you can see right now I'm facing the direction of the lean-to. And so if I wanted to take the diversion, I could certainly go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and walk a little bit here so you can see how it works. And now I'm turning on to the orange trail. And you can see the pointer arrow is pointing the direction I'm going. And the blue dot continues to track me as I continue on up the orange trail a little ways. And I'll go for just a little bit here so you get the, the idea of how this works. And so I'm going to continue on. And that's probably far enough. I think you can see here how that works. And I've moved up the orange trail just a little ways. So I can turn around and head back and you see the blue pointer arrow heads back in the other direction. So we'll go ahead and continue walking along. That's a little breezy today here, so probably a fair amount of wind noise on this. And now I'm back to the intersection. And I can go ahead and turn onto the main trail and continue following along and head down if I wanted to, down to the lean to. But I'm going to stop here because I think you've gotten the idea of how the map works and how you can navigate in it. So it was a bit windy that day and it was hard to hear. So I'm doing a separate audio review. Now there's some points of interest on the map. So we've got the tent B, which is our bivouac. We've got an S for a shelter or a lean-to, RS for reliable stream, P for parking, R for register. We've got a number of different trails, orange, blue, the black, which is the main trail. And then there's a pair of binoculars, which indicate a scenic view. And so you can see where you are, the blue dot in relationship to all of these, and it will help you navigate. Along the bottom, we have a number of other items. We have the bullseye, which will center the map on your current location, the blue dot. We have a pin, which will allow you to drop a pin in a particular location and record the GPS coordinates. 
in the center are our current GPS coordinates. And to the right of that, the pin with the three lines lets you access previously saved pins, tracks, or routes. And then on the far right, there are three vertical dots which open up additional features. And so the additional features give you things such as draw and measure, record GPS tracks, navigate to the destination, uh, and so on. Now, if I swipe up on the horizontal gray bar, it will give me access to some even more information. And I'll have access to a compass. It, when I swipe up, it records the coordinates to my clipboard. You can see speed, altitude, horizontal, and vertical accuracy as well. And if I start walking, you'll see my speed here will start to increase and I can hold my compass relatively flat. Now it's going to bounce around a little bit because I'm walking. If I wanted to get a more accurate compass reading, I really would need to stop walking and put my compass or my phone on a flat surface. And of course, you do also need to make sure that you do calibrate the compass in your phone before trying to use it. It's not 100% accurate. It's not like a manual compass uh, because it is electronic. There are some other items that I can do, uh, tabs I can do along here. So there's the tracking tab, and that allows us to record a track. And then we have our navigation tab, which allows us to do things such as project a destination, navigate to a feature, and a coordinates, or create a route. So I'm going to flip back to tracking, and I'm actually going to start tracking. I'll click the green button here, and you should see now it says pause tracking and stop tracking. I've got some speed, I've got distance, average speed, and duration, and you can see the compass is pointing the direction I'm going. And so I'm going to record this, head back to my car, and then we'll see what happens when we get there. Okay, so I have made it back now to the parking area and to my car, and you can see on events that the tracking created a little orange line that follows along. I can, whoops, get back to the center. And you can see here, I've gone 0.31 miles, my average speed was 2.6, and the duration was seven minutes and 15 seconds. I can expand it a little bit further and see the rest of the recording. And I'll go ahead and stop tracking. And so now my track is done, and you can see it there on the map. I can tap on the pin with the three lines to see my track layer and it will show me all my tracks. I can tap on the track one and it shows it to me on the map with some details. I can tap on those details and I can rename it, change the color, show a graph. I can move it to a folder. I can delete it. I can also swipe down on my status bar and it will allow me to navigate back along the route that I just recorded so I can backtrack, so to speak. So Events of Maps has a lot of different tools in it to help us navigate along the Finger Lakes Trail. It can help us make sure that we're on the trail and if we get off the trail, we can get back onto it. And we can also see various points of interest that are important, such as shelters and bivouacs or reliable streams, parking and registers. So you can take the digital maps that you purchased from the FLT site and load them here into Events of Maps and start using them today to navigate along the Finger Lakes Trail. All right, so that was a little recording that I did out there on M19. Uh, and that's how you can use the different features of it. The, the primary feature that I've always used from it uh, is just the navigation part of it, being able to figure out where I am, what's around me, uh, is there a scenic view coming up, is there a shelter coming up. Um, and, and if I get off the track, I've lost the blazes, which usually happened because I was in my own thoughts and daydreaming and wasn't paying attention. I can see, oh yeah, I need to turn around and go back and then find the blaze behind me. And there are a few places where it does get a little tricky on the trail uh, due to growth and, and just changes in the, the topography and, and the, the surroundings. Uh, so it does help you keep on the track and keep on the trail and know what's around you. Um, so I did say that I was going to show how to delete a map also because the free version of Avenza only allows you to have three free maps in it. So it, if I wanted to delete this M19, all I have to do is long press on it and then hit the delete trash can in the upper right. And it says, are you sure that you want to delete it? Yep, I can go ahead. And it just deletes it or removes it from Avenza. So I'll switch back over to my file manager here. And you can see 
M18 is still here. It doesn't delete the PDF. So you can store, you could store all 34 of the main trail PDFs on your phone if you have a sufficient storage and just load the, the one or two or three that you need for the current time. Now, one thing Roger was noting there uh, about the trail conditions and about uh, notices on the maps uh, and, and updating of the maps. The trail does change. So what I have always done is I purchased the maps as I need them. And Christy kind of alluded to how I did uh, the end to end. I finished the entire main trail. It took me 10 years and she alluded to it doing it a special way. Um, and the way that I did it is I actually did out and back hikes for every single one. It was a section hike. I parked, hiked out, and back, and then did a leapfrog and started where I turned around and then continued on uh, on the next hike that I did. It took me about 10 years. I started in 2010 and finished uh, October of 2019 to do the entire trail. So technically I did it twice, uh, but I used these maps. I used Avenza maps for a fair amount of it. Now, when I first started hiking, uh, it was pen and paper. Um, and then, and, and the smartphones really weren't that smart back in 2010. But as they've gotten more powerful, and in subsequent years, I started using Avenza Maps to keep track of where I was. Now, uh, Roger said, my favorite app. I don't know if Avenza is my favorite map. I actually use a different app for tracking, keeping uh, a, a history or a track. I don't use Avenza's uh, tracking features. Um, but it is available for you to use there as well. And as I was saying, with the, the maps, I would purchase them as I need them because they do change. And you can find out when a map was revised in our trail notices. So I'm gonna do DV real quick uh, and switch over to our web page here. And under the Go Hiking tab, there is trail conditions. And this is very, very important that you look at the trail conditions before you go out hiking. Um, and I have been guilty of this. I will freely admit that I've gone out hiking without looking at this and, and found that I, there was a trail closed that I didn't realize. And so it changed my whole hike. Um, but you can see on here that the maps are listed by their name or their map number. Uh, so I was talking about M7 earlier. Um, and there's a color-coded indication here. Red means there's an act of closure. Blue means there is some sort of notice. And gray means there's nothing active currently. Um, and we are actually working on a new mobile-friendly version, uh, which should be available hopefully soon. Uh, but it's not quite ready yet, uh, but that should be coming in the near future. So right now, do this before you leave, uh, before you get out on the trail. One other thing that I'd like to show here, because Roger talked about purchasing your maps, and hopefully you will get your, um, get your email and, and get the links immediately. But if you do happen to not get an email or you get sidetracked or you just, for some reason, you don't see the email, the way that you can get to your downloads is if you've created an account, you can go to my account and you can see all of your orders here. And so I can go into my orders and here are all the different orders that I've made over the last uh, year and a half. And I can go into a particular order. And if it's a digital map, it will give me the download link. Now this was back on August 18th, so it has now expired. Um, as Roger said, these do expire. So if I try to click on it now, it says, sorry, this is expired and I will have to repurchase it. And there are, in addition to Roger talked about server space, there is some other good reasons because these maps do get updated. And so we wanna make sure that we're not keeping old versions out there. And so it is important that you make sure you check the interactive map, the trail notices, and that you have a current map when you do go out on a hike. So that is my spiel for tonight. Uh, and I think we timed it out pretty well here. We're about five minutes from eight. And so that should give us plenty of time for questions. So I'm gonna turn the, the moderation over to Christy and, and kind of let her handle uh, moderating, and, uh, moderating any questions uh, that anyone might have. So we did have a couple of questions in the chat that I'll just throw out there to get us started. 
Um, somebody commented that it looked on your phone like you were operating in uh, airplane mode. So talk about that, the state sure. battery life. But so yep. how does that function? You download everything before you leave the house and then it's there and ready to go. You don't have to worry about cell service, correct? Yeah, so actually I'm glad someone caught that. that that's a very good, uh, very good notice. Um, I do tend to run my phone in airplane mode for a number of reasons. Um, that particular uh, time, uh, actually where I was parked on Black Road had no cell service. Um, but in addition to that, for the recording, I didn't want things coming in and interrupting me, uh, but it is for battery life um, because you really don't need to have background data coming in, emails coming in when you're out on the trail, uh, Facebook notices, and, and you name it, all sorts of different things. Now, your GPS will still work. It will still track you. So you can throw your phone into airplane mode, and it will still locate you and, and determine where you are. So it, it's helpful to kind of get rid of some of the distraction of everyday life and all those emails and, and notices and what have you. Um, and, and it also helps conserve your battery. Um, there was also a question. It says, it looks like some of the loop trails are disconnected from the main trail. Is that correct? I think this question came in when Roger was going over the interactive maps. Um, I'm not aware of any. Uh, I mean, the, we, we have what we call linear trails, which are the trails that go from here to there. We have loop trails, which will eventually get you back to where you started. I think I know what it is, Roger. And then we have spur trails. Yes. Um, it was that, um, is it not, uh, hang on. Oh, the Cayuga Trail? Yes. That, that is one. Yes. The Cayuga Trail is, uh, was built by the Cayuga Trails Club. It is on Cornell University property. It is not an official part of the Finger Lakes Trail system. However, the Finger Lakes Trail system is uh, uh, good enough to offer the map on th both the website and the store. And the Cayuga Trails Club is willing to have their map uh, as, as part visually of the Finger Lakes Trail website. Yeah, I just brought up my screen yes. to show, show what but it is. Aside from that, I think everything is pretty well connected. Thanks, Scott. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, I remembered seeing that while you were talking, and so I think that's what Hopefully that was what the question was asking. Um, somebody asked which program you mentioned, Scott, that you had a program that you actually liked better to use for tracking. So somebody wanted to know sure. what, what program that was. Sure, um, there's a lot of them out there as Roger talked about. Um, and the one that I happen to use is called Backcountry Navigator. It is not free, it does cost money. It was about 12 or $13 when I purchased it. My reasons for liking is just statistics. Um, it has a whole lot of data in it. I'm a computer guy. I like keeping data. I like knowing my average speed, my average moving speed, uh, altitude gain, all sorts of different numbers. And it, it gave me all those numbers and everything that I, that I was looking for. Um, Roger's a fan of, of uh, GPX Viewer Pro. I've also used that one. It's, it's a great app. And then of course out there, uh, we have Gaia and All Trails or other uh, very popular ones that people use. Um, Avenza Maps is the only one that I'm aware of that will take the PDFs in. Um, there might be others out there, but it's the one that uses those PDFs and the PDFs have the most detail on them. Now you can use the GPX file, which gives you the track uh, but it doesn't give you everything that you might want or that the PDF does. So I use the PDF, the Venza Maps, to navigate to figure out where I'm at. But for tracking, I use Backcountry Navigator. All right. Um, Patty Owens, volunteer in our office, by the way, asks what, about the old news on the trail conditions page. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite topics. Yep. <laughs> um, I think there are a couple of <clears throat> of old uh, messages that uh, should be deleted or at least archived. We do have an archive of, of most of our old uh, retired. Uh, we keep them uh, 
in case anyone's interested or sometimes a historical question can be answered by looking at some of the old trail condition notices. But uh, yes, do look at the date of the message as well as the content of it. And if it's 15 years old, uh, there's probably not uh, a wasp nest in the same place anymore. <laughs> Um, and then, is there any talk about using linked maps in Avenza so that you wouldn't need to re-download and upload a map every time it changes, just refresh? So we are investigating uh, making our maps available through Avenza. Uh, I will say, though, our investigation, um, as Roger and, and Christy have kind of said, you know, we are a volunteer organization. And we do rely on the revenue from the maps and, and working with Avenza, it would be a revenue share. So we would need to charge more than what we would on our website. So from a matter of convenience, yes, we probably can in the future provide the Avenza map, but they will not be at the same price as what they are available on the website. And there also will be no member discount. There's no way to actually do that through Avenza. Um, so we're looking into it. Hopefully in the future they will be there, but still the best place to get our maps is going to be on the website and, and through directly through the organization. And then uh, Re Rebecca Hemzik asks, is there any advantage to using a Garmin eTrex? Um, you know, it depends. It, I don't know that there's an advantage or disadvantage. Um, it really is personal choice. Uh, for many years, I used a Garmin. Uh, let me look at it here. GPS map, GPS map 60 CSX is an old one now, um, but for quite a few years I used a, a handheld GPS device um, and it worked perfectly fine. Uh, that was before smartphones had all this fancy technology. Uh, I got that in 2011 and used it for about five years, six years. Um, phones have come a long way. Battery life has come a long way. And so handheld GPSs are still going to have better battery life than your phone probably is. Um, and uh, they can, they may be able to do more. They're dedicated to GPS tracking. Um, the other thing is many of them also are water resistant or waterproof where your phone may not be. Uh, so it, it's somewhat of a personal decision uh, in the end. I now use my cell phone uh, exclusively when I go out hiking, uh, but it is waterproof and it has a good battery in it. And so I've not had any issues and along with using airplane mode. Um, so I've kind of retired my handheld, but personal preference, if you like a handheld, definitely use it and you can use the GPX with it. All right, and uh, one last question from Mark Volitis. He says, are there any potential discrepancies between the interactive map, PDF maps and trail conditions to watch out for? Oh, uh, could I answer that one? Sure. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the interactive maps, with the exception of those, um, that little triangular temporary notice, <clears throat> is derived from the maps that you buy in the store. So when we update a map, uh, th the very first thing we do is generate a whole new set of interactive maps, and then we upload that, uh, that change map to the store. Um, Sometimes that process can happen pretty quickly. We can get a new map out uh, in a matter of uh, a day or two or three, maybe. Sometimes it takes longer. We haven't quite come to agreement with a landowner, for example, or we don't have a, a good uh, alternative route. Um, so, or we're still negotiating with the landowner. So sometimes a, a change can take uh, a week or two, but generally you will find that our maps are far, far more up to date <clears throat> than any other representation of the Finger Lakes Trail. Uh, if you go to any of the other websites that have their, their interpretation of the Finger Lakes Trail, uh, you will find, uh, you will find uh, paths that are, have been gone for 10 or 15 years. So uh, if you want the latest, greatest official route of the Finger Lakes Trail, um, you do want our maps. And 
to, the simple answer is that the, the maps in the store are always what is uh, on the interactive map. That, that whole process takes uh, a matter of minutes to, to get the uh, interactive map updated once the, uh, the two files, the PDF and the GPX are in the store. <clears throat> And then Peg Fuller says, Roger said to report trail conditions by tagging the location, but where I hike, I don't have internet. So I don't think I can do that on the interactive map. I think he was referring to the interactive map and not an app. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to just talk about if they're, how to report mm -hmm. trail conditions if you are where immediately, um, if you sure. are where there's no internet or can you pin it and tag it for later? Yeah, so so there's two things. What Roger was showing on the interactive map is the ability to find GPS locations. So if you know that there was a particular a particular point on the trail, you could find the GPS locations. But Events of Maps uh, gives you the ability with that pin, and I didn't actually show that. Um, and let me bring my screen back up here. going to reload since I do M19 and give it a moment to process. I deleted it, of course, so now we got to let it reprocess. Well, that's reloading, Scott. I would mm -hmm. uh, just like to clarify, you said that uh, these are free maps. Uh, those are maps that you did purchase from the FLT. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so they are, they are not maps that you purchased from Avenza. Yes. So if you purchase Avenza maps or the maps from Avenza, then you can have as many of them as you want on your phone. But if you're using maps that you got from somewhere else, whether they're free or you purchase them, then you can only have three at a time imported. And so so if what Peg's question was, was, well, how, did, how can I, I don't have internet, how can I report? Well, if you don't have internet, you can't report it on the trail, but you can save it for later. And so this pin here will allow you to drop a place mark and it's wherever your location is. And so there I've got my GPS coordinates, I've got time, I can put a description in, maybe there was a tree fall here. And so now I've got a description of tree fall. I could take a photo potentially so that I can send that along with the trail report. And then I can go ahead and hit the checkbox and it has marked it. So now on Avenza, you can see there's that red, red uh, pin in the trail. Um, so that's a useful way if you find an issue with the trail to be able to save the location for later. And then to get to that location, you click the uh, pin with the, the three lines on it, and it will take you into your layers. And my screen is rendering slowly, there it goes. And there's the place mark that I just placed. And so you can get back to your place mark and it shows you, okay, there's place mark one. I can click on it or tap on it and it'll take me into that edit screen again um, so that I can, and it's rendering slowly, there it goes. Um, so I can get back to it and then use that information later when I have internet, when I have cell service to, to send a report in. That's all from the chat. Um, so if anybody else wants to last call for any questions, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, otherwise we wanna, I think, is that, do you have any, any last remarks, Scott or Roger? Roger. Uh, no, thank you all for being interested in our maps and supporting the Finger Lakes Trail. Yeah, I agree. Um, no additional for me and, and I echo Roger's uh, thanks for everyone joining tonight. And I, I, I thank, thank you both, Roger and Scott. You, you both, this is just another example of good volunteer effort. Scott going out in the field and videoing himself <laughs> and taking that time to, to create a presentation that he could actually show you hands on how this works and all the work that Roger has done with the interactive maps. We just, there are just some new new features that just came out recently. I don't think he pointed out that they were new, but it's ever evolving and changing so that we can give you better and better 
um, products and services to use when you're out hiking the FLT. So again, we are a membership organization. I hope you will consider becoming a member or making a gift. Um, keep an eye on our social media for more workshops like this and presentations. Um, and we really thank you all for, for joining us and be, be safe out there hiking on the Finger Lakes Trail. And I guess thank that's you, it. Thank you everyone. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Bye.